All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for tuning in to another Base Botanical Boot Camp. Today, we're talking about Japanese maples. Now, Japanese maples is a pretty big topic. There's a ton of varieties out there, a ton of different cultivars, um, and a few different even species of what we term like Japanese maples. So I'm going to mainly just talk about Acer palmatum today, which is the standard um, Japanese maple. That's just the, the, the original. Um, that's the one they use for uh, the rootstock for other varieties that they graft onto for the most part. It's uh, um, Acer palmatum, just the regular species, is just a very simple green leaf palmate. That means like a palm, the, the shape of the leaf, uh, like your, your hand. Um, and it's... Um, not all that striking uh, of a plant. They've made. There's so many more cultivars that have you know more interesting shapes and colors and all of these things. But the regular palmatum is a really cool plant too. I've got one planted in my yard, um, and they grow pretty fast. Uh, that is unlike most other maples. So today I'm going to at least talk about kind of the care, the maintenance, um, site selection of where to put most of these maples. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some individual varieties uh, that we sell and that we carry and that are very popular. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the game. But today, let's first talk about where, I guess, maples should be placed or um, kind of what they want. So uh, with all Japanese maples, what they want, first off, is nice, well-drained, fertile soil. Uh, do we always have that here in Middle Tennessee? No, um, sometimes not at all. Uh, there is ways to amend that. If you have um, heavy clay soils that are not draining very well, we need to amend the soil with a soil conditioner um, to allow for better drainage with the maples. The maples are okay with having a little bit of wetness. They're not, it's not terrible about that, but if it's just holding water down below, we want to try to avoid that site. Um, for the most part, Japanese maples as a whole, now we can't treat them as a whole because they are so different, but for the most part, they are going to want a partial sun, partial shade type environment. They're not, excluding a couple different varieties, they're not just a full blazing sun, hot spot all day long type of plant. Uh, they're just not. They perform much better if they are given some shade, particularly in the afternoon. Or an environment, say you have a woodland scene going on. You have some, uh, you know, some large trees in the yard and you want to have an understory area of trees. Uh, Japanese maples are really good to use for that with a, um, you know, sun through the trees type of environment uh, throughout the day. They're fine with that. And I will say some of the maples, or even all, we'll just we'll just say all the maples. If you place them in a full sun environment all day long, blazing sun, no break, most of the time you're not going to see death of the plant. That's not the issue. But you want to see a pretty plant through the whole season. If you put them in the full sun, what you tend to see is as we draw into these horrible days of summer, we get into August and it gets hot and dry, what you see is some tip burn a lot of times. So those leaves uh, can fry a little bit from the tips. Like I said, it's not going to kill the plant, but it's going to make them look a little unsightly as we draw into the fall. What we do want is for the leaves to hang on as long as they can because Japanese maples have such good fall color. That's pretty much the reason why we grow them. Um, and if you don't have a ton of leaves or if you the surface area of the leaves is, is minimized because of the browning, then you don't get the fall color that, that you so uh, want. So um, keeping them protected from that afternoon blazing environment is something that you want to think about trying to do. Um, generally speaking, the for me, in my head, when I think about maples and when I see them in sun versus shade, um, typically... The daintier the leaf, the less sun it kind of wants to take. So there's a lot of Japanese maples, I'm sure you've noticed, that have small cut leaves is what I would just call them as a general term. And they're very fine, uh, dainty, small little leaves. The more dainty they are, in my opinion, the less sun they're going to want to take throughout the whole day. So when choosing a maple out here, if you're by yourself or you know, and you want to choose one yourself, Typically speaking, the daintier the leaf, the less sun it's going to want to take. So, general rule of thumb, but that's that's a good thing to say. Now, on the opposite spectrum of that, when you have big fat leaves, especially big fat red leaves. So, um, 
I guess I'll get to that in a second. But there's one variety that's, uh, or a few varieties that are a big leaf, so a big palmate shaped leaf, a lot of surface area, um, dark red leaves. They come out red in the spring and they stay red through the whole season. Those varieties typically can take some more sun. I've seen less issues with those. And what you get is less greening up. Okay. We, it's a general term we say out here. The red leaf varieties come out red, like I said, but as the summer draws on, what you see is this this fading to a green a little bit. It's not just that perfect, true color that you see in the spring um, all the way through the season. So those bigger ones, um, and especially in, in a more shaded environment, will go more off red to green on you. So keeping those varieties, the big leaf red ones, say Blood Good or Emperor One, you've heard of these varieties, I'm sure Fire Glow is another one. Um, these varieties can handle sun much better than the other ones can. So they'll keep that red color a little bit better through the whole season, and you won't see that greening up um, all that much. There's a good variety. What you got there, Fire Glow? Blood Good. Got Blood Good there. Yeah, Blood Good's our number one seller out here for a red variety, and that's a great picture of a red variety. That's probably in the early spring. Like I said, as the summer draws on to these, they tend to green up just a little bit. But keeping them out in the full sun uh, will keep that red color a little bit better. So, next, what else are we going to say here? Oh, um, something to talk about. I've talked to growers of Japanese maples um, from all over the place, actually, and I've read a lot about them. And uh, fertilizer, we need, to, we need to go over this a little bit. Fertilizer with Japanese maples is actually not recommended, especially I've even read reports from, um, um, from ja like people in Japan that are growing maples that are, you know, all sorts of crazy varieties. Um, and they're biggest thing they say for the most part is that they do not fertilize with a nitrogen uh, type of fertilizer, like a heavy nitrogen fertilizer uh, to keep them growing. They really don't need that all that much. What happens is, is that you, you, you lessen your fall color is all the reports I was reading about was telling me that, that the more mm, nutrient nitrogen rich the soil is, the less intense the fall color is. So, don't be out there fertilizing every spring or every summer or whenever you would typically fertilize other plants. Maples really don't need that as much to, to kind of give you that fall show. Um, another thing about fall color is every year's different. It's funny. It kind of depends on how the summer goes, the available water that's down below, um, how long we might have periods of drought, uh, how, you know, maybe we have a great summer and we get plenty of moisture. Uh, fall color seems to be better that to those seasons. So, um, you know, some, some seasons we have a quick fall color and then a quick drop of leaves. Some years, like last year, we had an excellent fall show when it came to the Japanese maples. Every year is kind of different with them, so work with them. Even some years, colors can be different. Even on the same tree, you might see yellow lasting longer. You may see uh, the the presentation of orange quicker, or you might see it go to red quicker. And that's, uh, you know, it's funny. It's just every year, it's fun to watch for me, especially to watch the maples here on the lot, to see how the colors vary every single season. So um, get ready for that. You're going to see it. It's fun to kind of just observe that. Um, so there we go. No, don't fertilize much when it comes to the maples. Um, so next let's talk about what you kind of get when it comes to fall color. So whenever you're choosing a maple now, a lot of people like the red colors in the spring. Okay. They come out brilliant. Um, for the most part, the red leaf maples, the ones that come out red and stay red are going to be very, very showy in the spring. They come out brilliant red. I mean, like scarlet red, very, uh, fire glow specifically. That's one of my favorite red leaf big leaf maples um, because the intensity of the of the spring color is amazing so it comes out brilliant brilliant red and then darkens to a little bit darker red through the rest of the season and then in fall comes around with the red leaves um, and you don't get much difference you get a little bit sometimes uh, as the season goes you, you and the fall comes around those red leaf maples will intensify their colors a little bit but generally, they're going to come out red and they're going to stay red and you don't get just a ton of color change in the fall. Okay, that's the thing, though. But you get the red leaves through the whole season. If that's what you want, say you have a white home um, and the red leaf contrasts really, really well um, with your home. The red leaf ones are really nice to use, like I said, against a white backdrop home. Looks really nice. Now, if you're really into fall color then I would recommend getting a green leaf maple. Coming on out here, 
and finding one that suits you. There's a number of varieties of either weeping styles or upright styles or even true dwarf styles. We're going to get to that later. Um, but the fall color is very intense with the green leaf style maples. So they come out. Their spring flush is usually, uh, you know, some of the green ones have really cool spring flush. They'll come out like reddish, orange, yellow sometimes, and then they go to that green, and they stay green through the season, and then fall comes around, and then they light up. For the most part, most of them are going to be like a yellow to an orange to a red. Some of them just go brilliant red without that yellow or orange at all, but a lot of the green leaves have that that kind of working from orange to red or yellow to orange to red. And some of them have all three of those colors on the same leaf. Um, at, you know, in their fall show, it's all kind of blended together. Uh, some really cool ones out there that have just some awesome, awesome color in the fall. But like I said, if you do want the foliage for the season um, and it works well in your bed, you can go with a red leaf maple. Great, but not a lot of color change. Go with a green leaf maple and you can get some really intense colors out there um, that are, you know, just awesome. That's, that's what we love about the maples. Um, so, <clears throat> next, what are we going to talk about? Okay, um, I did mention, I wanted to mention, um, Japanese maples are probably the most sought after ornamental tree. In the country, I'd say, or maybe even the world, uh, they're they they just have this lore about them. I, I don't know what it is, but it's it's something about them that makes us drawn to them and become very very popular. So what this means is that they are very expensive, and they are uh, out here. It's probably the most expensive, you know, style trees we sell, and that makes people a little bit nervous. I think, which I don't blame you. But I've got to reiterate that, yeah, they're expensive, and yeah, they've got all this magic to them, and, and, and they're different and all that, but horticulturally, there's no difference. It's a tree. You're going to plant it the same way you would plant a regular old oak tree or something. There's no difference. They're, they're expensive, and, and they make you nervous, but don't plant them any differently. Like I said, you, you plant them the same way you'd plant anything, so... There's no special care needed uh, for me to tell you or anything that when it comes to planting. I just want y'all to yeah, just believe in it, trust in it, just like you would any plant that you're going to plant. Make sure it's adequately watered in the summer months and keep an eye on it. Look at it. Um, you know, look, try to look at them every day, especially if you're planting one this time of year. Uh, I mean, if you're going to come out and buy one and plant one, uh, you really need to observe that plant every day. Make sure it's staying adequately moist, not drying out on you. It's getting hot out here. It's miserably hot this week, especially. So um, if you do want to plant a maple and or any tree for that matter, maybe wait a month or two. Uh, we're, you know, September, mid-September into November, December is a really good time to plant deciduous trees um, in general. Doesn't matter what they are, maples included. So once they drop their leaves, sometimes it's the best time to go ahead and plant those maples. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about their leaves wilting on you or getting crispy or frying or whatever. You can plant them whenever they simply have no leaves, and then enjoy the spring emergence whenever they come out in the spring. And you've got you, you know, a little bit easier way to do it. But like I said, you can plant a tree this time of year. Just, just you know, you got to make sure you observe that thing every day. Keep an eye on it. Don't let it dry out. But Back to the original point. Maples are no different than any other tree. Uh, treat them the same way, even though they are expensive. So, that's kind of, you know, what you want to think about when it comes to maples. And if you have the right spot for them, or if you don't, or if you want one, always wanted one. Um, those are kind of the things you want to think about when, when planting one. Um, it's a good plant. A lot of varieties are very good to get close to the home. They're very nice to incorporate within your bed, um, surrounded by other things, making the maple the focal point of a bed, and then building around that. It's an excellent plant for that. Um, and like I said, close to your home with a lot of these varieties is fine because a lot of them stay very small. Um, and another general rule of thumb with Japanese maples is that they grow slow. They're not the fastest growers on earth. Some varieties will surprise you on how quick they can kind of get up there. But for the most part, it's a long-term endeavor you're going to have with your maple. You're going to watch it grow for years and years. And I, out here, I get to I get to talk to all sorts of people, which is great. And I get to talk about their plants and when they planted them and all that. And it is so nice to be able to see a picture of a Japanese maple that someone planted like 20, 30 years ago. And then I get to see it in its full glory. And it's just fantastic. So, uh, But these people have been working with this maple for, I say working with it, they've been watching it grow for the past 20, 30 years. And then what you get at that point is just a, a showstopper and it's something that's it's, you just don't see you know i don't know it's just something about that tree that's, that's just different 
So work with them, um, grow them, start growing them now because it's going to be a long time before you see something huge. Um, and then some of them just don't ever get huge. They're just true dwarfs that just move real slow, but but get to where they're going to go at some point. Um, now, so yeah, we've gotten through pretty much what you want to think about when doing it. Now I'm going to go through and um, kind of go through uh, certain varieties um, that we sell a lot of that are popular, that are seem to be the ones that's, that go out of here quicker than any of them, and what they do. And I kind of have categorized this myself in my own brain and how I think about it. And whenever I'm showing people uh, maples, the questions that I ask uh, to get to me where I think they need, you know, what they need to know and like which varieties would work for them based on their space. <coughs> so generally, I start the process whenever someone comes into me and says they want a Japanese maple. I say, okay, where are we going to go from here? So what I say is, do you want a weeping variety or do you want an upright variety? And simply enough, weeping varieties turn their branches down and they make this this skirt, if you will. So their growth habit is much, much different than a regular growing tree. It's weeping. So just like that there, notice how the branches turn down. That's a green leaf weeper right there. So that's my next question for people. They say, okay, I want a weeping Japanese maple for, say, a small spot close to my house or in a small bed, whatever. I say, okay, that's great. Next step, do you want a green leaf weeper or do you want a red leaf weeper? There's those, those two are kind of, that's where I go to. That's where we start. I say, okay. And they say, well, I don't know. I didn't think about it. And then so, okay, well, do you want red color all the time? Like I talked about earlier against the, you know, nice contrast against other things, especially greens. Um, or do you want a green leaf that's going to give you excellent color change in the fall? And they'll usually think about it or they already know what they want. And then we'll go from there. So, um, they kind of, um, you know, if they were to go with a green leaf weeping Japanese maple, there's a couple of varieties that we sell, a few varieties actually, that uh, are really popular and ones that I really like. One is called Ryusen, which is spelled R-Y-U-S-E-N. That's a young picture there that y'all are seeing of Ryusen. And it's really cool. I've got one in my yard. It's very close actually to my house and I'm going to let it fill out. Generally speaking, with the weeping style Japanese maples, whether it's red leaf or green leaf, what you see the most is in, in change anyway is not with the height. The height doesn't change very quickly. It's pretty slow actually to change height wise. They can get some of them can get upwards of eight to ten, even maybe twelve feet tall eventually. But that's a long time down the road, and most of them don't ever even achieve that. What you're going to see, the biggest change is going to be the width. The width is going to change every year. Some of those red leaf varieties, especially, say, Crimson Queen, Tamukiyama, Inabe Shidare, are, are, are some varieties that, that we carry and sell. Those varieties really get fat. Uh, you know, it's like I was telling you earlier with some of those customers that come in and show me old pictures. I've seen some really fat, like, I'm talking 8 to 10 feet wide. Um blobs mounds if you will of just red leaves just covering this whole area i mean you can't even see through them it's so dense with foliage um and those are just awesome as they get older i mean they just fill in they're so layered and textured and the leaves are kind of on top of each other uh and it just makes this big mound of of awesome leaves so that's going to be the biggest difference in change yeah that's a good picture of one there see they've got it going like to that lower arm is that two or just one i think it's just one and they've got those limbs just one kind of trained out that's sweet that's a really cool picture can you imagine the fall color on that on ryerson which i believe is what that one was um the fall color is like yellow. It's mainly yellow, but it does have some oranges in there. And then sometimes you see touches of red in them too. So, uh, but mainly yellow on the rice and variety and the fall color is just stunning. They had that one really going. I had a very long skirt um, going across the ground. So that one, uh, that one can get pretty big. That was definitely an old one in that picture we just saw. Uh, another variety of a weeping um, a Japanese maple that's got a cut leaf, which is a much smaller, daintier leaf, like I was talking about, would be called Waterfall. We sell that one as well, and it can create a very long skirt as well. It can really go down and out. Now, um, when it comes to pruning, if you don't want that, if your space is too small and you need to kind of keep it in check a little bit and that it's starting to kind of go on the ground and go out from you, you don't want that, 
simply cut that off over the winter time whenever they're truly dormant go ahead and give it a prune like i said maples are a deciduous tree just like any other deciduous tree we're going to typically do our pruning in the spring or in the early early spring in the winter time pretty much before they leaf out go ahead and get our cuts made and it will do just fine there's nothing wrong with that uh, to to cut on your maple it's totally fine uh, <coughs> so those are yeah those are a couple uh green leaf weepers that i think you like which one's that that's one? waterfall waterfall it's god that's money <laughs> Look at the trunk on that, though. I mean, that's an old one. You can tell the, the caliper of the... When I say caliper, that means the size of the trunk, the, the, the roundness of it, if you will. Um, that's the caliper of a tree, and that one has certainly been in there for a long time. And I can tell that that's had some pruning done to it. So that is kind of mushroom-capped, uh, topped, if you will, um, in my brain. And I love the look of that. That is cool. But they're not letting it go down and touch the ground. They simply do that just by pruning it, and they're going to prune it over the winter time. So you can keep your tree looking like that. Uh, but like I said, that's a long time coming. That's an old tree. Based on the caliper, I can tell it's old. Uh, but look at that fall color. I mean, that's something stunning. Uh, so cool. Yeah, green leaf weepers, definitely my favorite. I like the green leaf ones a lot because of that color change. They're just sweet. Um, so then next, like I was saying, uh, the red leaf weepers, and we've got a few varieties of those. I didn't mention red dragon is another variety of a red leaf weeper. I like red dragon because it's got a funky branching system. You'll see, I've got a few of them out here if you ever want to come out and look, um, that just have this main stem and these stems that come out very flat and like almost perfectly up the whole plant. It's just got this branching habit that's very like, perfect almost or just layered and kind of gnarly uh red dragon cool one to grow uh, like i said full red foliage and uh, a good one our one of our best sellers is crimson queen and tamukiyama those are two varieties of red leaf weepers you got a picture of those tyler maybe one of those to show people the kind of the the just denseness i guess of it very yeah first thing i'll show is i did find a very mature photo of a red <coughs> dragon what is that? That's the red dragon. Oh, money. Uh, it's a very old one. Look right? at the branching habit, though. But Look how just gnarled up it is. And that yeah. thing, God, that's got to be... How old is that? That's hun that's 100 years old. <laughs> it's got to be. I mean, that's been it's, worked on. I can tell that's been yeah. kind of branching. have been played with to kind of get to that habit. But, my God, I, I've never seen... There you go. That's a yeah. much more accurate kind of photo of of what you're going to see here at least in middle tennessee this one i believe is uh this is a tamuki that's tamukiyama yeah and you can yeah. see how dense it is now i can see that trunk a little bit through that and i can tell that's a pretty old one as well not near as old as what we saw a second ago but that's got a pretty good caliper on it too so that's a that's a that's an accurate picture of what you can actually see here in middle tennessee uh some of the bigger specimens as they age what they're going to do that's a, a good shot of, of kind of how they are here. You know, we don't live in Japan. Japan, they can have awesome Japanese maples, you know, 500-year-old specimens and, and such. And their climate just, it, it, you know, it lends itself to Japanese maples, hence the name. Um, here in Middle Tennessee, a little bit different. We just don't get to grow those specimens that you get to see out there. We can still do some awesome work with maples, but not like they can there. So that picture there is an accurate photo of what you can do. And you can see kind of the space it needs in the bed, but still how you can fit other stuff around it. Um to create this nice little landscape scene. Uh, like I said, starting with the maple first, getting that out there, and then playing around with other plants to get around it to accent that the foliage color is uh, something that's it's really nice in a bed. So, red leaf weepers or green leaf weepers. We've gone over it. Uh, that's what you're going to want to think about before you come out here. If you have a small space and you do want a weeping variety, think about green leaf versus red leaf, what you want, fall color, all of that. So, um, there you go. So, next... Since we're talking about shorter ones, uh, the weeping varieties, let's go into a couple true dwarf varieties. So, true dwarf varieties are not weeping at all. They don't turn down like the other ones do. They are an upright growing plant, um, so they, their leaves and stems want to go up, uh, just like a normal tree would, but they stay very small. 
True Dwarf. There's two varieties specifically that I'm going to talk about. Uh, Shishigashira is one. I don't know if I'm even saying that. I, I don't know if I get that right or not. What are they? Lion's Head, I think, is a common name for, for that plant. And there it is up on the screen. It's a cool plant. Now, when I say True Dwarf, I don't mean like two foot. True Dwarf in the maple world is going to be like in that 8 to 12 to 15 range with age. It's about as big as I've ever seen. When I saw about a 9 foot tall um, one of these lion's head uh, somewhere not too long ago. And like I said, it was about from the truck anyway when I was driving by it and saw it. I'd say 8 to 9 foot. And that's a pretty big one um, for our area or whatever. We sell them pretty small. Um, we do sell some of them pretty big, but do know they grow very slow. So a big one of these, if you were to come out here and want one, they're expensive. Uh, so get ready for that. So it's a, it's a green leaf variety, but it's a very small leaf. It's still palmate. So it's still got that palm, you know, your hand shape leaf, but it's much smaller. It's very, very small, very prized. This plant specifically, and the next one I'm going to talk about are prized for bonsai work. Uh, very, I mean, they, they, they bonsai very, very well, mainly because they already have small leaves. Um, they are densely packed leaves as well. It's a, uh, um, it's not open and airy like some of the maples are, um, that you think of. It's a very tight growth habit. As you can see in that picture, a very small tree for a small spot, upright growth habit, a million leaves on these things. I mean, it, their leaves are so small and they're so bunched and tight that there's like a million leaves per plant. So what you see in the fall is a show. I mean, there's so many leaves, so you get so many different colors. They're at different stages of development. The top ones will get different before the bottom ones will. The bottom ones may turn yellowish orange before the top ones do. Uh, you get reds in them. You get all sorts of color in these in the in this variety right here. And it's just a show because of how tightly packed those leaves are. Um, very cool plant. If you do, if you are a bonsai enthusiast out there and you want to go for something like this, we sell these guys in little one gallons as little like starter pack bonsai trees. Really cool one to start with. And uh, it's a very sturdy tree. The stems don't bend very well. They want to just break if you bend them too far. So be mindful of that. Um, but other than that, it's a cool one to go with. And uh, just a, a, a great for a small area. Very Japanese scene. Say you're trying to create that kind of look. Uh, got a koi pond. Got a, uh, you know, just a regular pond. Whatever. And, and, and you want to build. You got these maybe statues around them or whatever. Just a cool one to put in there that doesn't get crazy large. Uh, but it's a very good talking point. Your friends come over and be like, oh, what's that? Like, that's cool. Uh, that would be that one. Now, another true dwarf variety that we have is called Mikawa Yatsubusa. This is probably my personal favorite. I can't explain to you enough how cool this plant is. It's got this layered leaf effect. I don't know if Tyler can get a picture up there at some point. It's um, going to take a second, but I'll I'll get there. All right. Well, he'll get us one up there in a second. But it's got a lot of times when people come out here and they see Mikawa, uh, they say, oh, that looks like pot. Uh, the leaf shape kind of has that look about it, which a lot of the Japanese maples do. Um, but this one specifically... And it's got a bigger leaf than the Shishigashiro, which I just talked about. It's a larger leaf, um, still palmate in shape, but it's got a layered effect. It's like the leaves lay right on top of each other. There we go. Cool, cool plant. That one's got planted, looks like, in a rock bed. Uh, awesome with big rocks and boulders for sure. Um, but it's got, like I was talking about earlier, it's got this layered leaf effect. They almost lay plant. Uh, like you say, you, you really notice the leaves. Um and it's it's show in the spring comes out really cool i mean the the new growth comes out just bright as all get out fades to a green um and then gets your awesome fall color which is on this one like i said every year is different a little bit with the maples but this one specifically is a very much so yellow to orange for the most part it will finish red but i think of this one as yellow and orange and just a lot of different colors in between but what's really cool about Macawa is that when it sheds its leaves, it's got a cool branching structure. I mean, the branches are just like all, I don't know how to explain it really. It's just a Dr. Seuss feel, I guess. It's got that kind of look. The leaves the leaves do too. But the, the branches over the wintertime are interesting even without leaves. Some people might even notice it 
in the garden over the winter time before they would in the in the growing season with its leaves on it. It's just yeah, so they've got that one going. The the stems are just funky on it. But yeah, they a, a cool branching structure. Another one, like I said, if you're really getting into bonsai or you're just starting, that one's an awesome one to start with. Once again, it's a slow grower. They ain't cheap usually, so if you want to start small, that's fine. If you want to go all out and just go and get you a big one, uh, get ready to, to, to open up the pocketbook because they ain't cheap. But excellent in a small spot. Uh, just a something I feel like everybody should have in their garden at some point. If you're ready, you got, you know, you got a little money, got a paycheck, ready to get something out there, that one's one that, that they really ought to you know think about getting. Um, excellent for a small space. All right. Moving on, those are the true dwarfs and the weepers. Those are the ones that are going to stay small. So moving on to upright growing ones. Um, once again, there are upright greens and there's upright reds. So when you come out here and you're wanting to choose one, you're going to let us know. You, you say, oh, yeah, I want a maple. I want a big one, one that's going to get large. Say, okay, you want green leaf or red leaf? Once again, you're going to let me know, and we're going to figure that out. So let's start with the upright greens. By far, our best-selling cultivar of an upright green, I would say, would be Sango Kaku, uh, K-A-K-U. Um, coral bark, Japanese maple, is the common name on this, the one that we almost always use. And why do we love this one so much? Well, we do because of, once again, after it loses its leaves. Now, the leaves are great. You can see up there on the picture, just a very typical... Japanese maple leaf. Nothing special about that. They kind of brown up a little bit. They just look like normal stems. Winter comes along and it brightens up those stems to this brilliant red. And it's a showstopper in the wintertime. I mean, it's fantastic. What well, you know, there, Not a lot of plants give you that in the stems, uh, but coral bark does. So it's got this multi-season interest that you just don't get with a ton of other plants. I mean, you got like red twig dogwood that'll do that a little bit. You might be familiar with. Um, they stay much smaller. Uh, the sangos can get pretty large. It's a full-size, upright-growing Japanese maple. It's a 20 to 25-footer, even 30 with age. Um, and from what I've observed, it's a pretty rapid grower. It grows faster than, a, than some of the other varieties, it seems like to me. So that, like I said, is our best seller by far. Um, that winter color is awesome on those stems when you're out there, especially if you have a backdrop of snow. We had a great week this, this winter, uh, I guess about, about a full week of snow here in Middle Tennessee, which is becoming more and more rare, it seems. But we had an awesome, awesome snow event this, this winter. And if you have snow in a backdrop up against that red-stemmed Japanese maple, there's just nothing like it. Even snow hanging off the stems creates this scene. That's really nice to look at. So, um, multi-season interest tree, it's our best seller by far. Grows rapidly. Um, one issue that you might have with Sango that a lot of people do, unfortunately, is a little bit of dieback. Now, for the most part, it doesn't happen too bad, but Sango is bad about doing that a little bit. So, it grows a little bit rapidly, so those so the stems get a little bit twiggy if you will at the end um at the end of the, the tips of the branches so what you see is a little bit of winter dieback what happens is the topmost stems will die back just a little bit hopefully not too far sometimes they go down a little further than others but that is one issue that we have with sango nothing you can do about that that's simply mother nature it just kind of happens with that specific cultivar literally just in the early spring before they want to leaf out go ahead and trim all the brown sticks off the top get that trim right back up and it'll simply leaf out below that and it'll cover that up uh, but do know that can happen and it does frequently happen actually with that variety but doesn't mean it shouldn't be grown it's it's something that's cool it's it's like i said multi-season interest tree a uh, plant that gets fairly large Try to avoid putting it too, too close to your home. I mean, you can still put these maples fairly close to your home, but make sure it's a big enough bed away from your house so it's not touching your house. Uh, get them out a little bit further. That goes with both of these upright greens and reds. Uh, not not too close to the home. Probably not the, the, the way to do it. But if you're wanting to create a new bed or something out in the you know, out in the yard a little bit more, maybe you're just, you know, got a lot of yard you got to mow and you're kind of tired of that and you want to create a bed and you get this like maybe decide to get some rock or something and make a rock bed out in the middle of the yard. Starting with that Japanese maple dead center of that bed and then working around that. 
is something that that you ought to think about doing. Um, it, it, it's it's nice, and to see a bigger tree out in the yard, I think, is is a little bit better than just like tight up against your home. So keep that in mind. Um, my favorite uh, upright green variety is called Siryu, Siryu, some people say. It's spelled kind of funny. I think it's S-E-I-R-Y-U. And it's an upright growing Japanese maple. It gets to be pretty large, 25, 30 foot. Eventually, it takes a long time to get there, but they can they can get there. And it's actually a cut leaf. It's got a little bit of a daintier leaf, much smaller than what we just looked at with the Sango. Sango is more palmate. This one is more uh, dissectum, if you will. It's a, a much smaller, daintier leaf. Uh, once again, there's about a million leaves on this plant. The leaves are really small, so there's a whole bunch of them. But this plant's got an open airiness about it that I just really like. You can kind of see through the stems. It's kind of, you can see light pass through it a little bit. It's just daintier in general. It's just got that kind of look. Um, <clears throat> now, like I said, it is an upright growing variety. But the fall color on Sarayu is stunning. I don't know if you got a pick of that, Tyler, but this is Working like... Working on it red red like scarlet awesome red um and just to see that with just as many leaves as there are uh, on sarah you just creates this beautiful beautiful plant i mean it's hard to describe how pretty it is it's a um i'm hoping we can get something up here but that's i'm working on it almost (laughs) there he's almost there yeah uh, Just keep going, baby. Yeah. You got this? All right. Well, this one, uh, <laughs> you know, the Syrius aren't all that expensive either. What you can get, you can get some fairly large trees uh, for a pretty good price when it comes to Syrius. I don't know why that is. I guess it's just more common in the trade. It's uh, for whatever reason. Maybe I think it does grow a little quicker, too. That, the green leaf ones tend to want to shoot up a little bit quicker. So sometimes you can find deals out here and get a pretty large tree in a, in a small pot and you get a good price point on it. So Syrius is not all that expensive. It is certainly worth, though, having in the yard. Um, uh, Julie Patterson, who works here, uh, she's worked here for over 25 years. She orders every single plant we have at this place. She's insane. Uh, she's got a Syrius in her yard and has had it, I think, more or less since she's worked here, at least 20 years. And she showed me pictures of that, and it's starting to get big, and it's just a sight to see. She put it a little close to her home, I think. I think she's kind of regretting that a little bit, because I think it's actually starting to touch her home now. Um, but... I've seen pictures and it's it's really stunning. It's really one of my favorite upright greens to grow. So, uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble finding some good size photos. I've got one here that's throw one up. Let's just throw one up there so people can kind of see. Yeah, it's that's not the not the best color. Whoops. There we go. No, that one's starting to work towards it. I guess that one's like I said. A lot of them are like a yellow to orange to red, but this one finishes really. Really nice and red. Last year, especially, Syrius on the lot were, were something to see. Um, so, like I said, my personal upright green favorite. Um, if you may not. There you go. That's a good striking little plant there. Yeah, I like that. That's good fall color. And see how it's just a little tree that surrounded by other things. They it just a stunning little tree we all love these guys that's why we're doing a whole webinar about it i mean it, you know we ain't gonna do a webinar about oak trees but you know <laughs> never say never <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we run out of stuff to talk about but yeah maples they just they had that look about them that was a great little picture there um so yeah all right upright by the greens. way just interjecting if uh, if you out there have any questions you can comment them if you're on facebook or chat them if you're on zoom and austin can also address that as he goes along and lists his favorites. That's right. Yeah, just interrupt me. I don't care. I'll get to talking. And So, yeah, y'all, give me some questions if you got any. Because I'm getting to kind of the last part of it, and that's going to be the upright red varieties. Becoming real pop. I say becoming. They've always been popular. Um, but a lot of white is going on out there, especially in Nashville. People getting new homes, brick homes that are old, have been there a while. They want to paint them white. That's a trend that I'm seeing happen a lot. People show me that. Uh, they say, yeah, we just painted our house white. It happens all the time. And they want to put a red leaf maple out in front of their home. I get it. Makes sense. Looks great. White and red. I mean, it's just, it's a good contrast there. So, nothing wrong with that. Um, hence the name Upright Reds. They're an upright growing tree. They get large. 25 foot, 30 foot. Um, eventually. Our number one selling Japanese maple that's red and that's upright is called Blood Good. 
it you've probably heard of this before it's got a very dark leaf um, and it generally stays pretty dark. Like I was talking about earlier, the more sunlight, uh, blood good needs a good amount of sunlight. Don't put blood good in the shade. It's not going to do well for you. I mean, it'll do fine. Don't get me wrong. It'll live. But in the sun, you're going to get much more intense colors and it's going to stay there better through the whole season. Um, it is a fat leaf. There's a good picture of it there. That's a small blood good right there. They can get bigger than that and and they will get bigger than that that one even for me like in that site where they've got it right there it's almost too close see like for me i'm going with a weeping one right there i'm putting that blood good out in the yard a little bit further letting that thing grow that just seems too tight to the home blood good gets big it just does so give it some space to grow um and it'll do well for you but like i said if you want that red leaf blood good's a great variety um but you don't get much color change in the fall so got to remember that with the red leaf ones you just they're not changing all that much they just mainly go brown and fall off yeah they get they brighten up a little don't uh-huh. get me wrong they do especially but the next one i was going to talk about which is called fire glow if you can get a picture of that one up fire glow's awesome because of its spring flush its spring emergence is bright i mean really bright red like this beautiful. is the best one i could do yeah i mean that's but that's beautiful look at that i mean the sunlight's hitting it um you know it's showing even some different colors in there whenever you look up at it like that fire glow stays a little bit smaller than blood good it's a true red leaf like i said it comes out brilliant red and then darkens to just its normal kind of red maroony color if you will um and then in the fall it does actually brighten up just a little bit more it goes back as like this kind of scarlety red color it's not just a real deep dark one fire glow is probably my favorite upright red and for the most part you're going to get a very perfect single stem round canopy tree when it comes to fire glow every time we get them compared to blood good and compared to like emperor one which is another variety of red leaf um, uprights it seems to be the most uniform i guess if you will like i said very single stem lollipop style canopy tree very tight and full uh, but it it does brighten up in the fall a little bit. And then, like you said, Tyler, yes, unfortunately, brown leaves to a drop. <laughs> but no reason not to grow it uh, just because, like I said, it, it's a it's a small-ish growing plant um, that stays tight and just has awesome, awesome color through the whole season um, using other plants to complement well. I like to use chartreuse colors, too, around maples. Um, you have probably familiar with, like, heuchera. Heuchera's got excellent foliage color uh, with the lime kind of varieties, chartreuse colors, and they're good for the for shady environments. Um, so putting them off out underneath um, a maple like that would be cool. Um, if you were creating a scene like I'm looking at right here, like if I were to do that and i've got that fence in the back like they've got like i kind of want some gold up against that fence uh, to kind of accent that foliage there's a plant called sun king aurelia that we sell in the perennials that i believe was the perennial plant of the year last year um i bought a couple this year i have been so impressed with the growth habit on them they're staying chartreuse through the whole season i mean it's like this lime gold color so back a couple of those Back behind that maple uh, would have been a pretty cool little sight right there. Uh, we've got a couple questions now. What's up? One was, uh, and I believe this was one or two maples ago, but what was the previous upright tree you showed us that was layered? That was layered? Was yeah. it Makawa? Uh, I don't remember. Makawa is definitely a layered leaf. Like I was talking about, I kind of did this, like it's layered on top of each other, but that's a true dwarf one. It's It's still an upright grower. Like I mentioned earlier, but it's going to stay much, much smaller. Very good for a small spot or even a pot or even bonsai. Um, I think that's what you were talking about. Mikawa Yatsabusa. That was the dwarf one? That one, yeah. That's a true dwarf upright. Mikawa, M-I-K-A-W-A. And then Yatsabusa, Y-A-T-S-U-B-U-S-A. My maybe favorite maple of all of them that we've talked about so far. Which was another question. What's your favorite Japanese maple? It's got to be that one, I think. Mikawa look at that thing i mean it's just so cool it's like it'd be in a dr seuss book um i can't help myself on it and the fall color is so cool bigger leaves layered effect cool branching structure over the winter time awesome one just really cool and worth it worth it to have so um i guess i gotta say that would be my favorite i love them all don't get me wrong i guess um I like the green ones better. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I don't like the red ones near as much as I do the green ones. I like to see that color change in the fall. Uh, so, 
yeah, anything green when it comes to Japanese maples, I love. Like I said, I actually got a seedling from my girl Joy here, who is our perennial department uh, leader. Y'all probably know Joy. She's an excellent maple grower. She's got a bunch in her yard, and she's funny about finding little seedlings in our pots. That happens sometimes out here. Uh, we'll look around in the Japanese maples pots, and some of the seeds that have dropped fall into the ground and shoot up and what you get is little seedlings out of that joy is good about taking those little seedlings and potting them up and growing them um so this season she had one planted in the ground which these are seedlings so we don't know what you get that's what's cool about seedlings you get genetic diversity with seeds that's what's cool if you just take cuttings of plants those are genetic clones um so there is no genetic diversity there but with seeds you get that so whenever you dig one up and you don't know where it came from you don't know what you're going to get so she had planted one i think three or four seasons ago and it's been growing for her um and she wanted to create a new bed or she was doing something and didn't couldn't use that plant there so she asked me hey I'm going to dig this thing up. I don't really have another place to put it because her yard's getting pretty full because she's got an awesome, awesome landscape out there. And uh, she said, do you want it? I said, oh, sure. So she brought me a about three-foot Japanese maple seedling that I have no clue what the parentage is. Don't care just because I like to watch it. Um, and it's small right now. Like I said, it's about three foot. It's got about three to four to five main stems on it. And uh, it's a green leaf, small leaf, small leaf, green leaf, upright growing maple. Don't know what it is. Like I said, don't care. I'm going to watch that thing grow, and I'm just excited to have it. So that was a cool find to have. Um, Y'all can all do the same thing as well if you ever see little seedlings or whatever around your yard or, uh, you know, whatever. You pluck them up, grow them, see what you get. It's just fun to have. We got any other questions? Uh, Not that I'm seeing right now. All right. So where are we at? Well, we've pretty much finished. I mean, we, we covered, I think... You know, I, guys, there are so many cultivars of Japanese maple. Oh, my God. I was looking at it last night online just trying to <laughs> narrow it down a little bit. And I talked to you all about some of the ones that we sell here. We sell way more than what I talked about here. And we can go through them all whenever you get here and picking the right one for you. There's ones that speak to you. Uh, way more so than others do. Some people just absolutely love the red leaf maples. Like, that's what they want. They're after it. Got to have it. I get it. Uh, we have multiple varieties of that we can help you with. Um, but like I said, there's just something about Japanese maples that we all love. I can't pinpoint it. Don't know what it is. Uh, besides, you know, the factors that we've all talked about today that what they give you, but it's just, it's a magical tree, if you will. Um, all of them kind of are, if you ask me, wispy, some wispy, some bold. Um, so they're worth growing. Um, any, any time you got a bed, you got a small spot, you got a big spot, you, whatever you got, your yard needs a maple or two in it um, and to, for you to watch grow because it's just fun to do. So, yes, they're expensive, but save up a little money. If you need a tree that's cool, come on out and get one. We've got them. Um, and we restock on those heavily in the fall, actually. Um, so roughly mid-September is whenever we start gearing up for deciduous trees uh, that we bring in. And maples are no exception, Japanese maples specifically. So uh, we'll have a ton of inventory coming up soon for you to look at. It's awesome to come out here whenever the fall is in order. I know Tyler wants the... Uh, once the maples start getting lit up around here on the lot and they're starting to show their fall color, Tyler's going to get some pictures out there for y'all to see. And it's a it's a really cool time to just come out here and walk the lot and uh, see what all different colors you can get out of them. So um, definitely worth, worth, worth seeing. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I've got today. I uh, hope you learned something. Um, I just kind of ranted about maples. but oh, mm, One it, more question. Oh, got a I question. have to interject. Teresa's asking, uh, I have a Japanese maple with green bark. Leaves are bright red in spring, turning to green in summer. Do you know the name of it? Also, will it get large? Oh, and gosh. I'll just say this, Teresa. If you send an email to info at BatesNursery.com with the photo of it, that might help us identify it a little bit more because we look at leaf shape as well as bark color and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be tricky for me. I'm sorry. I, I need to see at least something. Uh, there's a number of plants that'll, you know, a number of different maples that kind of have that uh, look about them. And if I can get some pictures, I can help you properly identify it, hopefully. And I can let you know if it's going to get big or not. Uh, green stems is interesting. But a lot of them have that. Um, and you said it, she said it comes out really brilliant red in the spring. Uh, leaves are bright red. Bright red in the spring. Turning and to, then going, Turning to green in the summer. Turning to green. Did you ever see fall color, I wonder, by chance, if what the fall color was on that. Mm. Anyway, you got me interested. Yeah. I'd like to know. Huh? 
Yeah, well, I, she hasn't responded. She's, okay. But she did thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, like I said, get us some pictures or just come out here and chat with me and, and bring your phone and, and give me some pictures. Uh, while I got y'all too, whenever we comes to identifying stuff out here for us, I want y'all to help us out and give us a close-up of the leaf. Give us an backed up picture of the overall plant um, and then maybe a midway picture of some of these not just a close up of one single leaf or something we really need multiple pictures to help you properly identify any type of plant we're talking about so um, send in some good pictures of of like I kind of how I just said it and that'll that'll help us give you a accurate she said turns back to a reddish hue in fall reddish hue in fall in fall mm-hmm. cool yeah I don't know I need to see the leaf shape I need to see if it's that big you know fat leaf green or if it's a cut leaf green or um i'm assuming it's not a weeper but either way like i said let me see some pics yep and uh i'll i'll certainly try to help you out once again info at batesnursery.com cool and address it to austin (laughs) (laughs) he'll love it (laughs) i will uh so anyway thanks again for watching y'all we like doing these um and uh i hope you got some good info out there and maybe grow you a maple we've got them Thank y'all.